likes of Ford and Vauxhall have pursued three-cylinder turbocharged petrol engines as a means of producing similar power to higher capacity engines, but with much lower emissions. Kia have sought after doing the same thing for themselves. This is the new Kia Seed, or more specifically, this model is the Pro Seed, meaning it's sort of the three-door, slightly funkier variant of the five-door model. On top of that, this car is also the GT Line specification. And that means you get all of the nice exterior trinkets such as large alloy wheels, sporty bumpers, uh, mildly adjusted suspension, and those really funky ice cube lights on the front bumper, um, all off of the Kia Proceed GT, which we did a review of recently. That's the slightly sportier model, a bit of a warm hatchback. So you get all of those aesthetic treats as well as some new seats in here and a few other toys which we'll come on to. So whilst we're talking about the outside, <coughs> let's start there. I think visually the car looks great. Okay, red might not be the best colour to show it off, but there are subtle creases on the bodywork. Those large alloy wheels set off the car really nicely. The arches don't seem all empty. And almost the coupe-esque profile of the car is really, really quite appealing. In fact, Kia's design language has come a very long way since its inception. And the cars featuring this tiger-nosed grille and big round headlights have always garnered the attention of the neighbours going, is that a Kia? Uh, yes, yes it is, and the designs are great. They are producing some really handsome cars at the moment. Inside, the cabin is something to have its key competitors worried. There's a really nice element of style. There's not loads of flat, bland surfaces. Things seem quite sculpted and shaped in here, which keeps things interesting. And taking center stage here is Kia's excellent touchscreen navigation display. Not only is it one, genuinely one of the best in new cars today, it's really easy to use, it looks great, and it hasn't sent me up a blind alley yet. So I'm really, really impressed, actually. That also gives you access to your phone if you connect it up, uh, satellite navigation, DAB radio. Um, and down below it, we've also got dual zone climate control in this car, which is nice. In the back, there's actually a surprising amount of space considering the car's slightly sloping roof line. You can quite happily fit two adults back there. Middle seat sort of reserved for a child because of the limited leg room. Boot space uh, is actually quite generous, a good amount of space. It also comes fitted with a cargo net, which is really, really useful to stop things sliding around in the boot. What about that turbocharged three-cylinder engine under the bonnet, I hear you cry? Well. I'm sure there's still some doubters out there who couldn't possibly imagine a world where four-cylinder, say 1.6 higher capacity engines could be replaced by one-litre three-cylinder turbos, but that is a, that's a reality now. Look at the one-litre Focus, a great performing car, and also the one-litre Vauxhall Corsa, which is another little cracker. This one-litre engine is actually quite hushed lower down in the rev range, but obviously if you put your foot down and you really want to accelerate, you get that three-cylinder thrum, which Personally, I don't mind. Uh, that's only when you're really revving the nuts off of it to get the most out of it. Not that you need to, because power is actually produced further down in the rev range thanks to that turbo. 171 newton meters of torque will help you execute overtaking maneuvers and clamber out of busy junctions around town. How will that tiny engine perform on motorways? Well, actually pretty well, because I had to do from the south coast to Essex and back, and then from the south coast to Luton and back this week, and the car performed admirably. With its sixth gear, you just stick it in its top gear, and it just carries on, it poodles along just fine. And don't go thinking it's not capable of a good overtaking maneuver either, because so long as you are willing to drop out of that long sixth gear into fifth, it'll overtake with the best of them. In terms of refinement, both road and wind noise are taken care of. There's not too much of that protruding into the cabin. All I will say is these larger alloy wheels do have a habit of thumping into potholes and road imperfections, which sends a bit of a shudder through the cabin. Its handling characteristics in general are pretty good too. You can throw it into a corner, there's plenty of grip. There's maybe not so much in the way of feedback coming through the steering wheel, but it seems to be the norm with a lot of modern cars today. But there's not too much body roll either, and uh, you feel really secure in the way that it handles. Something I don't really like is this three-mode adjustable steering. You can sort of go through from comfort, which is really, really light, 
normal, which there's a vague feeling of what direction the wheels are pointing, and sport, which sort of gives you a normal setup. It just increasingly weights up the steering. I think the whole system could be done away with. I leave it in sport the whole time, and even then I still think it's a little bit too light. Kia claim over 57 mpg on the combined cycle, and if you want one of these in your driveway, you can have the slightly less powerful one litre car for just over 17,000 pounds. Don't go thinking this one litre Kia Pro Seed is a near miss for any of the other manufacturers. Kia are right on the money with this thing. The build quality is great. You get a seven year warranty with the car, which is industry leading. It's great to drive, it's easy to live with, it's economical, and considering how much kit you get as standard, it's pretty good value for money too.